Yeah, well, hello YouTube. This is a couple of days after the fact, Fort Master here. And uh, yeah, this was a reaction that I was pretty sure I wasn't going to actually be releasing. So uh, I'm not going to keep you guys waiting for too long. But the basic fact is, I did not think I did a very good reaction to this. But I've gotten a couple requests to publish my reaction anyway. So, yeah, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> well, hello YouTube, it's me Fortmaster, and welcome back to another, like, Deltarune, like, theory reaction? I don't know what it, exactly what this is, but yeah, this is another um, request that I got since I'm, you know, currently working through you know, several years of Deltarune theories since I fell off, which I am happily starting to, like, work my way through at this point. But yeah, I got one suggestion by one Shadow of Rose Raid to watch a video called Birdly, Deeper Than You Think, a Deltarune video essay by Shadow of Rose Raid. Wait a minute. Yeah, so it, I'm gonna say this. It took me a uh, embarrassingly uh, long time to realize that this video was suggested by its creator. Now, uh, I don't know what this is really about. Uh, the description just takes, uh, just talks about like take a step back to analyze a misunderstood character, uh, you know that sort of stuff. But I mean, the video has almost four thousand views, so. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth a watch, so we'll have to see, won't we? So, yeah, of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my Let's Play of the Day, and with all that out of the way, uh, let's get this thing actually started then, shall we? A little bit anticlimactic, but you get the idea. It's, it's a funny slice of life. This next one, though, and I'm glad we have our peak stream viewership for this. This Wait. next one is sort of the is main event Is this Andrew? Here. The previous- we Like Andrew Cunningham? Working up to it. I didn't want to immediately like jump into the deep end here, but this is Umris. Um, I have no idea where it comes from or who the author is. It's just a raw text dump that someone saved. I have a suspicion that it became notorious enough that the original author deleted it or something like that. Wait. What? I want a child, she whispered, closing her eyes. Bomp, bomp. The bombshell drops. Their marriage was struggling the whole time. <laughs> By the left turn, holy shit. Bird lizard child. <laughs> Chat just explodes. I can't deal with this bullshit, or oh, we're just getting started. Hmm. <laughs> Wait a second, it, I didn't actually watch it, but it, is all of this from uh, from Andrew's uh, stream where they uh, they read like bad Deltarune fan fiction? Uh, yeah, uh, Rose Raid. What have you gotten me into? And more importantly, what have you done? In hell, do I get the Oscar yet? Chris is wearing a black suit with a blue sweater underneath. It fitted Hint. thin and slim shape. All right, we got we got Chris pronouns. All right. Your attempt was failure. Birdly said, walking over the well, grabbing the back seat off Chris's chair. Birdly felt an ill joy from saying this. Chris was almost quivering in his seat, but with a sickening smile. Wait, that's that's the ending. That, that's the end. What 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 what, what, what happened? Did I paste it wrong? Shit! It, it cuts off there. This is maddening. How can it end there? Umris ends in a cliffhanger, either intentionally or simply because it's unfinished. 
This likely confused many readers, including Andrew Cunningham, who read it out loud on one of his streams. Eventually, a lone suggestion by a chatter gave him the idea to lend a collaborative effort to finish Umris, mixed with a contest for good measure. The main goal was to create and most likely ending. Oh no! I believe I was tricked. I wanted Deltarune lore, not poorly written fan fiction. Though, that being said, I don't know what's worse. Poorly written fan fiction or purposefully poorly written fan fiction? Oh God, I, 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 I'm gonna be completely honest here. I have a deep history when it comes to fan fiction. Um, never written, actually, never uh, written anything. I, I mean, I did try to start one story, but I abandoned that a long time ago. Um, but yeah, back when I was younger, before like sites like Archive of My Own and stuff like that, I was a very prolific fan fiction reader. I read a lot of fan fiction. In fact, uh, I still have my old account which I still pop on once in a while just to see if any of the stories that I follow have updated. Um, and if I go to it... Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've favorited almost a thousand stories! Oh god, and if I... let's see, if I go by... Uh, date added... What was the... because I know... because I remember there have been a couple of times where like uh, authors that I've followed have just you know, stopped or deleted their accounts, which I always found really annoying when they do that. But if I go down, look at the... Yeah, I... God, my very, very early Bioshock fan fiction, 2010, oh god. Back then I was enamored with, there were, like, the two fandoms that I, like, uh, that I went to uh, and, f and found, tried to find stories were, like, it was Bioshock and Transformers, and I was very, I was a very heavy, like, romantic back in the day. Like, one with, like, Bioshock, I always loved, like, stories of, like, big sisters falling for, like, one of the few sane survivors in Rapture, and then regaining humanity in some way or another like that. And when it came to Transformers, um, I was a shipper. I, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna hide it. I shipped Jack and RC from Transformers Prime. Uh, yeah. So where is this Someone going made to a go? Reference. I don't know if it was a joke or not. They're having like an earlier version of their fic where Birdly went to a strip club and Ralsei was there as a stripper and then he, he realized he was gay. Th that, that sounded fucking transcendent like hallucinatory but it was cut uh maybe fortunately maybe unfortunately oh yeah crack fix. Shadow of Roserade. uh yeah i didn't hallucinate that good Oh no. Okay, yeah, I was tricked. This is not about uh, this is not about Deltarune lore. <laughs> this is a crack fic. I've been Shanghai'd. Okay, well, 
Better buckle up. See how long I can take this. You think just because you have a more expensive house and a rich wife and a cute little kid that you're better than me. Burnley roared in Chris's face, his spit smattering itself on the Hunan's nose. Well, you're not. In fact, you're a jealous piece of shit. You're jealous of my luxurious job. Okay, so not only... Not only is this a fic that's purposefully written bad, they purposely put spelling mistakes in it. Oh, how long is this video? <laughs> uh... My superior intellect and my beautiful wife. Meanwhile, you have nothing but dozens of worthless pretty pictures and a wife who doesn't really love you. Chris Dreamer, you are nothing but a two-faced snake. Birdly finally spat put his long rant, leaving him breathless and red-faced. Chris's face was still only about an inch away from the tip of his beak. It was all he could see. His scarlet red eyes drilled into the bird's very soul. Birdly grabbed the bottle of wine that stood at the table, and before anyone could stop him, downed it all in one gulp before tossing it mindlessly into the ground, causing it to shatter. Everyone was too shocked by everything to do anything to stop Birdly as he kept waddling unevenly towards the human that was sat in front of him. Wait, so how, how slowly is he waddling? Because it said before that his, his beak was less than, an, it was about an inch away from Chris's face. And yet somehow, like even after, you know, downing the wine, he's able to waddle even closer? I, also, gotta love, really, I, I'm gonna say it here, Chris almost looks like, kind of like, a knockoff, or kind of like one of those rich people, like, almost Mr. Burns-like rich people from The Simpsons, almost. You want to know what they hate the most about you, though? Birdly asked, his face much too close to Chris's to be considered socially acceptable. As I would imagine! The bluebird's eyes were crazed and unfocused. I, uh... Birdly lost his train of thought as the bottle of wine he had just guzzled had begun to take effect. He oh, that you never drink on an empty stomach there, Birdly. His earlier reckless action. He leaned against the table to catch himself. His brain felt fogged up, and he couldn't think straight. Uh, Birdly, are you all right? Noel hesitantly asked, standing up. Shut up, you harlot! Birdly shouted back. His voice gurgled. I'm... I'm fine. Birdly said before falling down, his vision going entirely black. Oh. Birdly felt the rough texture of black leather as he woke up. He blinked the blurriness out of his eyes. How did he know the color if his, his eyes were so close? He was laying down haphazardly in the back of a car. His car. Susie was sitting in the driver's seat, gripping the steering wheel tightly, her head firmly pointed towards the road. Some tis a modern pop song about breakups or sex or something was playing on the radio. Birdle shuffled, attempting to stand up. But as he did, the car ground to a halt at his stoplight sending him careening forward, hitting his head on the back of Susie's seat. He yelped in pain. Good morning, jackass. Susie snarled sarcastically at him. I hope you enjoyed your beauty sleep. Where are we? What's going on? Birdly asked, disoriented. 
Last thing I remember, we were eating dinner at Chris's and- And then you went off on Chris and then guzzled the entire bottle of wine at once despite me telling you specifically not to drink that night. Then you shattered it on the floor before passing out mid-sentence on the floor. So oh god, yeah, this is poorly- this is poorly written on purpose, isn't it? Oh, no! I mean, I'm not an author, but this- this hurts to listen to! Ugh! Would they explain? Badly could she acknowledge expression on her face from the rear view mirror. And yet in the picture she's and looking back at him. And I had to somehow deflate the situation after that. It was a pain in the ass, but of course I had to be the one to deal with it. You're like a big child. Susie, I- Shut up. I'm not done. So they cut him off. I'm tired of your stupid stunts. You ruined a lot of things for me tonight. Me and Noel were old friends, Chris too, and you threw it all away in front of me. I don't even want to look at you anymore. Susie, what are you talking about? Birdly prodded, the looming feeling of panic beginning to set in. There was a second of silence. Here's the plan, asshole. I'm driving us home, and then once we're there, I'm gathering up as much of my junk as possible, as fast as possible, and then I'm leaving. Leaving? <sighs> Susie, you can't- I can, and I will. But Susie, where will you be staying? Noelle offered to let me stay at her place after all the shit you pulled. I don't understand how she managed to find it in her heart for her to do that, but I'm very thankful that she did. Susie, after all you've been through, you're so readily willing to throw me aside like that. Birdler asked, his voice brimming with soulful betrayal. The traffic light turned green. Yep. Susie said before stepping hard on the gas, launching the car forward and tossing Birdler back roughly. Okay, so... I don't know who they have reading the narrator. Oh god, but I have to say, just the whole thing of the way he's reading this is making this so much harder than it has to be. Oh god, I, I we're less than ten minutes. Like I'm just over ten minutes into the video, and I I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue this. Causing him to squawk in pain again. He should have probably Let's keep doing put this. a seatbelt. A desolated bird lair wandered the sweaty, damp streets of New England in the cold night. <clears throat> he had sent Susie twenty, no, thirty messages in the past hour, and she hadn't read a single one. It had only been a day since she left him alone in their one shared big empty house. Yet to Birdly, it felt like am eternity. Am eternity, he really? The pockets of his suit, the same he had worn on that fateful day, yesterday, for a cigarette. She. Okay. Um, I'm going back to the whole purposeful misspelling of the stuff. Um, I I have to wonder. Did did the. D Shadow of Rose Raid, if you're watching this, if I even put this out is the question, um, did you write this normally and then kind of do an editing through purposefully making stuff worse? Or was it a conscious effort while you were typing things up to make it purposefully bad? pulled out the box and quickly realized he only had one fag left. Yeah, I know that I know that that's the British slang, the yeah. And tossed it aside. He spent a few seconds fiddling with the lighter, attempting to light the cigarette. Hey, hey, hey! Oh god, it's spammed An erratic voice called from an alleyway, echoing almost statically. All alone on a Birdle jumped back, startled and yelped. He looked over to the source of the noise and saw a short man emerging. His jawline was angular and shapely, and his hair was black and slicked back with enough gel to drown in. 
He was also wearing shads that sat unevenly shads. on his long, sharp nose oh. and a black leather jacket like a strange greaser. Who are you? The man laughed a grating laugh. <laughs> <laughs> the name's Sp Spamton. Spamton G. Spamton. The bird squinted. That can't be a name. He replied simply. Oh god, the text is even going off the screen. The, man the video was made badly on purpose. Out here on the street. Anything can be your name, pal. But, but. That boy, do I got a deal that'll drive you wild. A deal? Birdler asked. I'm sorry, but I don't want anything to do with your illegal business. Oh, come on. Big shot. The man whined, sidestepping in front of the blue. Yeah, so I gotta say, I think that, like, my go-to, like, voice when I imagine Spamton is still, like, Alex Rochin. Uh, Rochin? Uh, how do you pronounce- I don't know how you pronounce his last name. Anyway, you know, the guy who who's voicing Kane in the Digital Circus now. But I do have to say, for all of, like, the, po the, the poor, like, production decisions in this video, or whether- well, most likely that they were done purposefully, I do like, for the most part, how they're doing Spamton because it does, you know, very much get across that whole like glitching speech pattern that he that they were kind of going for in the game. That that is done actually pretty well. Too bad, path. You know, when the big 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 ones make my merchandise illegal, it's because it's heavenly. The man opened his coat. Revealing an astounding amount of needles, bagged powders, and pill bottles. Come on! Big shot! I know you're down on your lu 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 lucky charms. <laughs> All you need is a little drop of heaven in you, and you'll be as free as a puppet that cut 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 its string. The man. Wait a second. In you, and you'll be as free as a puppet that cut 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 its string. Was that Matt Pat? That, that had to be Mad Pat. That sounded like him, wasn't it? The man smiled to get on Kania. So, what what do you say? Birdle paused for a moment, seriously considering the suggestion despite himself. After a chilling moment of silence. Okay, wait, pause this. Okay, we're back. Staring at the man's eerie smile. Birdly shook his head and pushed Spamton aside. I don't want your drugs. Now scram before I decide to cut the cops on you. The drug dealer laughed. <laughs> you think I'm afraid of the fuzz? I've avoided them for years. 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 They've never right. been able to catch this big shot. <laughs> but suit your, yourself, chicken. I know a lost cause when I see one. Hell, who? It's part of the job. The man said before beginning to laugh madly again as he slinked back into the alley he came from. Birdle turned back around, hoping to be able to forget that experience as soon as possible. Before he knew it, he had arrived at his destination, Grillby's Bar. He pushed the wooden door open. Making the entry bell chime. A fun jazz song emanated from the jukebox in the corner of the room. Birdless scanned the I bar. I guess theme is a little jazzy. I never thought of that before. One of the stools by the counter. He sat down and waited for a minute for the barkeep to notice him. The fire headed man behind the counter was cleaning some glasses and plates, not turning around. Birdless slammed his fist hard on the counter to attract his attention. Hey you, plebeian worker, I would like a drink. The man finally yeah, turned around. Yeah, that's what you do, insult the, insult the, uh, the worker, Birdless that's what you get. Stood his ground. Whoa there, kid, where are your manners? The man sitting next to him asked, somewhat humorously. Birdle looked over to him. He was a red bird monster like him, but he had scattered white feathers indicating his age. 
I'm not a child, I'm 35. Birdly reply through gritted teeth. Relative. The other bird wants to lie. Very relative. Birdly grew yet more infuriated. Why was everyone laughing, arguing at him today? Could have fooled me with that attitude. Now, this time, try to ask politely. Okay, kid? Birdly composed himself begrudgingly, staring stony daggers into the barkeep's face. I would like your strongest alcoholic beverage, good sir. There was an awkward pause. Also, I just noticed, was it ever... <sighs> I mean, like, I know in the game it's very much that, like, Birdly is portrayed as, like, very geeky and stuff like that. But I never got the impression that he spoke with a lisp. Like, that's a... that's a design... Uh, that's a... that's a choice for sure. Please. You heard the kid. Grilbs, hook him up with a shot of the good stuff. The man sitting next to him called out. Birdly squinted frustratingly at him, holding himself back from chewing him out for calling him a kid again. The other man didn't seem to notice his irritation, however. The barkeep walked through a door, and after a second, returned with a full unopened bottle of rum in one hand, and a shot glass in the other. He placed both down in front of Birdly. Now, kid, what are the magic words? The older bird monster sitting beside Birdly began drawing. Oh god, this- Birdly gripped the tight fabric of his jeans in irritation, curled his talons angrily and grit his teeth to stop himself from yelling at the man. Thank you. He begrudgingly replied. Birdly swiftly moved to grab the bottle and the shot glass and quickly poured himself a shot and drowned it in a single swift motion. He exhaled as he put the shot glass back down. So, kid, what brings you to a dingy old place like this? Birdly poured himself another cup of rum. Oh, so he's going to just I'm drink the entire bottle. He repeated irritatedly before downing another shot. Wow, you're really going at it. Huh, that's probably not healthy. The other man said, ignoring Birdly's response. I don't care. Birdly drolled before he downed another shot of rub. Listen, kid, if you've got a big problem, I don't think coming here and trying to drown it in rum is the best idea. Birdly growled as he swallowed another shot of alcohol. He straightened himself and turned to the man sitting next to him. Sat up! He yelled. The Echo! entire bar went quiet as his voice reverberated off the walls and everyone turned to face him. Calm down, kid. I'm not a child! Birdler cried out as he rocketed his feathered fist into the man's face. After a second of stunned silence, the fiery barky picked Birdly up by his cuff and carried him towards the door, resisting his incessant struggling and flailing. And well, how weak is he? Onto the street like an odious garage bag. Birdly landed. Garage bag. Also, I just noticed we're not getting subtitles anymore. They they just ab they just abandoned that at some point, didn't they? Oh God, Gaster. Oh, God. Harshly on his ass on the hard pavement and took a tumble, leaving him spread out on the sidewalk. The barkeep wiped his hands as if here we're handling a plague-ridden rat before quietly walking back to the bar and calmly closing the door, with only the familiar bell chime to tell Birdley of his departure. As the crestfallen and humiliated bluebird lay out on the streets, he could once again hear the warm sounds of conversation and laughter erupt from the bar. Without him, he stayed down on the floor for a while, dazed. 
Well, well, well! A familiar voice broke him out oh of Oh god, his here we go again. Father. Looks like someone dropped their- their-, their Frozen chicken, 999. On the street. Truly, what a tragedy! Bird lip ride his eyes open. And after a delirious moment of blinking away his astigmatism, the shape of the person speaking became clearer. The signature shades and slick back hair, not to mention the annoying voice was hard to misplace. What's wrong? Little sponge. Phantom asked. Did the big big one kick you down again? Leave you out to dry like an unwanted f rag? The shady dealer shook his head. Tisk tisk. Come on, friend. I know you were looking for a little slice of <laughs> in there. You're looking for the sweet, sweet, sweet freedom sauce, aren't you? Birdly groaned, the shakily tried to stand up from his spot on the cement pavement. Cement him pavement? A hand and helped pull him up. Birdly's head was swimming as he tried to protest what the man behind him was suggesting. Aren't you tired of always getting kicked kick down to the curb by those around you? Aren't you tired of people taking you, you, you for granted? Birdless delirious vision saw purple. Yeah. He sluttered. Aren't you tired of being so small and in the dark world? Oh, okay. Is that like the name of the strip club? So much more, more, more than getting tossed to the street like trash. Yeah. Don't you want to feel big, big, big again? Feel important again? Feel so big, big, that you can stand up tall and look over the world like God? Yeah. Birdly replied triumphantly. The crazed salesman grabbed the drunken bird by the collar and pulled his shades down, revealing the greasy, unclean, and sunken skin around his eyes one of which was clearly red or pink, perhaps due to some allergic reaction, and the other somehow yellow, and yelled in the other man's face. So is that how, that's how they're doing the whole thing with the different colored lenses? Okay. It couldn't just be, you know, the glasses were a different color. No. It's literally his eyes. Don't you wanna be a big, 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 big shot? Yeah. Birdler yelled with fanatic fervor, entirely swept up by his unfettered emotion. Spamton let go of his customer's collar and composed himself once again. Well, lucky for you, I have just the thing you need. He explained before digging into the inside of his jacket. After a short moment of fumbling, he pulled out a small plastic bag with a pure white powder inside and held it out to Birdler, as if he were tempting a dog with treats. Birdler stared for a moment, transfixed. This is my special Gungadero. Just one quick whiff and you'll feel like the <laughs> biggest son of a bitch to ever walk on two legs. This here, it's powdered powder, my esteemed customer. Powdered Birdler powder? He reached out to grab it in his drunken days as if you were attempting to get his feathered hands on a Latino beauty's succulent buttocks. But before he could feel up a soft taste of heaven, Spanton snatched it away. Of course, I'm not just going to give out a taste of heaven for free. 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 As you know, everything in life has a price. 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 Birdly whimpered like a puppy. How much do you want? 50 Cromer. Please and thank you. Birdley quickly pulled his wallet out of his pocket and handed the shorter man a $50 bill. Sure, man. Okay, whoever did these illustrations obviously didn't actually read this. Phantom snatched it in a split second like a starving man seeing a discarded cheeseburger. Ple ple pleasure doing business with you, kid. Spamton cheerfully said before stuffing the bag into the bird's pocket. He pat the taller man on the back in a friendly manner. What now? Birdly absent-mindedly spat unintentionally. Spamton laughed. What now? What now? Now you're free, you son of a bitch. Get why? You're no heart on a chain. You're free to do whatever the hell you want. Anything. 
Fuck yeah! The other man said before giving the wobbly, drunken, feathery monster a push, causing him to nearly fall. Go cra crazy, bitcher! Birdler felt a certain freeing optimism blooming in his chest. He really? Was free! He didn't need Susie, who dropping him like a child dropping an old unwanted toy over the smallest thing. He didn't need a child who'd only drag him down. He didn't need anyone! He felt himself begin to cackle at the thought. He was fucking free! He wanted to scream and cheer, and so he did. He turned back with a smile on his face. Why, thank you, gentlemen. He began before noticing a distinct lack of anyone behind him where the salesman used to be. Birdly shrugged and continued on his merry way, a smile larger than any he had had in years on his face. As he walked through the dingy, dank streets of New England with the newborn optimism abloom in his chest, his eyes caught sight of a glowing neon sign. The Dark World, it said, the purple letters flickering on and off like the lights on the side of a car which he never used. Below it, a second line of text glowed just as brightly. X. 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 Oh, okay, that's what it is, it of course. It was a gentleman's club, clearly. A facility for the lonely and unhappy, the young and wild, and the promiscuous and shameless to all congregate over one common interest. The love of all that is lewd and indecent. A place like that would never have appealed to the birdly of a mere couple of days ago. A man wholly committed to his wife and to all that is right and good and decent. But that wasn't the birdly that was standing in the middle of this New England street on this gloomy day. You know what? I this just remembered that this whole thing involved. That this whole, like, chapter involved. Like, Birdly going to a strip club, seeing Rousey, and realizing that he's gay. Ugh, God. I mean, we're over halfway through the video. Uh, let's at least try to finish this. There's nothing to hold him back from doing everything his carnal heart desired. This Birdly felt the bulge in his pocket and in his pants and pushed the shady door open with a deviant smile. As soon as he began to climb down the groaning stairs, the loud sound of music bumped off the wall and reverberated in his soul. It got louder yet louder as he slowly scaled down the stairs. Louder yet louder, really? Excitement building. He parted a thin curtain that led into the main showroom of the club. Many lights were mixing and flashing everywhere, and many other men sat around Tequila's stage, cheering along with the music. The colorful lights illuminated the stage where a lithe and lanky monster performer with iridescent white fur was riding a metallic pole seductively. Welcome to the dark world, where your darkest fantasies come to life. Why does Gaster have a lisp too? Why does everyone in this have a lisp? Traveler and heavy voice said, suddenly snapping him out of his trance. Birdler quickly turned his head to face the source of the noise. He was met with a pure white face with strange configuration of features that caused him to recoil in a mix of fear and disgust. The man seemed to frown. It is all right. I understand it can be quite a frightful sight. I had an accident back when I worked in the old factory many years ago. I took a fall where I shouldn't have, and well, never mind that. Birdly looked away from the man, having no interest in his tall tales, and looked back to the dancer on the stage who was now spinning gracefully on the pole a rousing, slim physique on full display. I see you've already got something else in mind. The decrepit man said flatly. Birdly ignored him. His focus was entirely on the captivating monster that was enrapturing all onlookers on the stage. Birdly felt around his pocket, feeling both the distinct presence of his wallet 
and of the bag of heaven Spamton had sold him. How much for some alone time with her? Birdly asked, not looking away from the hypnotizing dance. His voice shook with giddy anticipation. The other man made a strange face, but quickly shook it off. How much are you willing to pay? The man asked grimly. Birdly looked back at the man, whose deformed face now held a sly smile. Okay, so I just realized something. Like, and this is sort of like, you know, behind the scenes sort of deal here. But, like, most of the time when I've done reactions, like, I'm gonna be completely honest here, reactions are the entire reason why this channel is even monetized. They give it the shot in the arm views-wise that cause it to start growing really well. Um, but I've never had a real issue with, like, the whole, uh, you know, thing, uh, like, the list of things like, oh, does this video have, like, guns, uh, talk of guns in it, or violence, or stuff like that. I've never had to actually interact with any of that stuff before. So I'm really wondering, if this video does go out, how well it's going to actually do, monetarily speaking. Because, I mean, granted, I don't make a lot, but I want to see if something like that. Uh, but I'm genuinely curious to see if something like this would g get noticeably less than what a, a normal reaction does. I mean, and I mean, granted, I know all of this is done purely in jest, like in the video itself, but you know how YouTube can be. He pulled out his wallet and took out the final notes he still had wedged in there. Forty-five dollars. Bird Forty-five dollars. The man's pale hands plucked the bills from the bird's hands. Yeah, two minutes. No, it's like so, so like fifty bucks on like a little thing of crack, and then you're less than that for a hooker. Okay, sure. He then turned to the monster who had yeah, just the math the does certainly math, causing uproarious applause to erupt from the crowd. The man made a signal with his hand as the stripper looked over, beckoning the tired dancer to come over. Those shapely legs climbed out of the stage, gathering the money the audience had showered them in as they walked towards the two. Birdley couldn't help but stare. The man handed the stripper the money Birdley had handed him and whispered something in his sultry ear. After they parted, the beautiful monster turned to face Birdly, causing his heart to beat harder and his gr to throb almost as hard. Hello. The monster greeted a voice almost angelic to Birdly's ears. I'm Rousey. How may I be of service today? Birdly smiled smugly. He briefly thought about what Suze would think of him doing this. She'd probably be repulsed or infuriated. She'd call him a freak. The thought made him smile wider. The man led the two towards the backstage of the club, eventually finding a private room and opening it for the two. He put a pale, bony hand on Birdless shoulder. Have a wonderful time. He said before turning to Rousey, his face stoic, and giving the monster a signal with his hands. Rousey nodded. Rousey graciously led Birdley into the room. The room was lit with a calm and blue light and decorated very meticulously. Where did the where did Rousey's horns come from? They weren't there before. And I thought that was a tongue, but no, that's that's Birdley's beak bending like. Oh, I swear. Okay, it seems like actual. Oh, never mind. Never mind. There is more video after this. Oh God, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna finish this, then I'll grab something for lunch. I just. Ah. Kid is slow. It wasn't something Birdly would ever expect to find in a place like this. The room felt cozy, and the bed sitting in its center felt inviting. Ralsei walked towards the bed enticingly. The white fuzzy monster looked back to Birdly, those pink eyes made his heart buzz with excitement. What's your name? 
Rousey asked in a sultry voice. Birdly. Birdly. Rousey repeated with a sexy giggle. Well, Birdly, I'm all yours tonight. Rousey. Yeah, for 45 bucks! Before falling back on this soft bed, the slide part in those titillating legs serving as a beckoning for Birdly to come closer. Birdly licked the lips of his beak. He hastily stumbled towards the angelic figure that lay upon the bed, presenting to him as if he were a child who'd wandered into the back of the bakery and found the hidden cake factory. Hungrily, Birdly grabbed the fairy I, I don't, legs I don't even... that was served up to him on the bed and pressed them against his face. They smell distinctly like strawberry. Birdly pulled the plastic bag out of his pocket and held it up, glancing at it. Is that... Rousey began to ask. Cocaine? Yes. Birdly snarkily replied. Oh, you dirty boy. Rousey sighed seductively, causing more blood to rush to Birdless Jonathan. Do you want any? Of course, I'm mean, using this. But at the same time, like at this point, oh, I mean, actually, the way he's acting, of course, he there's not enough blood going to his brain. Yeah, of course. Birdless asked. No, thank you. Rousey said. The only drug I do is weed. It helps me relax. Birdless shrugged. All right then. Birdless said before grabbing a loose bill from his pocket and rolling it up. Don't move. Birdless grabbed the packet and ripped it open, carefully pouring the powder in a line on Rousey's outstretched left leg. Rousey frowned. The powder was bound to get mixed up with the white fur, causing a huge- I was just about to say that! Rousey- like, Rousey is a goat! Again, Birdly is- okay, why am I trying to put logic into this? Um, ah. You may still need to be carefully handled later, but Rousey was bound by the payment, so Rousey dampened that irritation. Birdly put the rolled up bill to his nose and snorted the whole line as the near microscopic flecks of white dust entered his nose. He felt them ignite his insides like a slicing fire. He gasped for air as his lungs burned with a passionate fire and his mind sparked as if he were Frankenstein's monster. He despised it when people called the monster Frankenstein. That was the doctor after all. Being brought yeah. to life by lightning from the heavens is blazing. Again, this whole thing, I mean, I have to ask again. I, I don't know, at this point, I don't know how many times I've asked, but like, like, how, oh God, this whole thing, it's just, it's, it's physically hurting me. I am in a constant state of pain. I hope you people like this. The passionate eyes landed on the white monster laid bare before him. Birdly slowly crawled on the bed like a predator, slowly scaling every inch of Rousey to meet Rousey's face and those bright pink, exhilarating eyes. Rousey blinked enticingly. Eyelashes fluttering in a way that enamored Birdly. Birdly kissed the goat monster's lips passionately, his snake like tongue wrestling Rousey. Snake like? Does Birdly have a forked tongue? In the mouth. After a long moment of making out, the two parted. After a moment of mutual gasping, Rousey spoke again. What are you going to do with me now? Birdly grinned deviantly, straddling his crotch up the monster's body until it was a few centimeters away from that fuzzy face. Birdly began to unzip his pants. I have a few ideas. Wait, you're telling me they... and then... no. How long? 
six hours, and then he put it in the, and then they, after that they, you're, you're lying, you can't expect me to narrate this, this is absolutely preposterous. You know, stuff like this, I can, I can totally see this happening in an actual fan fiction. Because, I mean, one, they obviously, you know, don't want to be put into YouTube's ba uh, bad books here. But also, I could just see an actual author doing something like this. Like, have the narrator, like, stop reading. Um, because they don't want to have to act write actual lemon. You're not paying me enough to read this out to the world. You think I want this on my resume? No, this that's it. I'm done. You can find another fool to record this for you. I want nothing to do with this. I'm out. I'm out. Get someone else to do it. You utter fools. Oh, okay then. And then nothing happened for two pages and three paragraphs. <laughs> The narrator with a robot. Okay, hopefully, hopefully this goes a little quicker because my one complaint with that previous narrator was he read so slowly. Like, I, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm pretty sure you could have cut at least like five or six minutes off of this video just from like him not speaking. Like every word was the utmost important. Birdly woke up in a haze. It felt like his head had been hit by an anvil. So he much quicker. Oh, this is beautiful. Nor could he even remember where he was or what had happened last night. He slowly blinked the fog out of his vision and began to take in the room he was in. It was dark, with only a few dispersed candles around to give it any sort of lighting. He was clearly laying down on a soft bed, but he could tell it wasn't his own. This room was clearly not his either. He looked over to the side and saw the clear outline of a person next to him. His initial instinct was that it was Susie. It was nice to know that despite him being so disoriented he could still count on her staying by his side forever. Uh -huh. He smiled to himself and slowly moved his hands over to the lump beside him. He moved to caress Susie's powerful arms, but the ones he grabbed a hold of weren't as rough as he'd come to expect. They felt soft and flaccid. His hands explored further, eventually reaching the place where he could usually feel Susie's bountiful bosom, and was met with nothing but air and fur, and a moan from his bedmate. Birdly jumped back as the realization hide him. He had been sleeping with another woman, he had been cheating on Susie. Then another realization hide him twice as fast as the first. Of course. He hadn't been cheating, Susie was the one who left him. Birdly looked back over the shifting bed lump and huffed. But then, who is this stranger in bed with him? Birdly gripped a layer of warm fabric that covered the lump and quickly pulled it away, revealing the fuzzy white form of a familiar monster. The monster shifted uncomfortably as it roused from its slumber. Birdly looked all over his bedmate's glistening white fur, taking in their body. Unlike him, who was still wearing his underwear, this monster was entirely nude. As the monster turned lazily on their back Birdly felt his throat clog up as the memories of last night that had evaded him quickly raced back to the forefront as his eyes landed on the white monster's crotch where there limply hung a. Birdly screamed at the top of his bird lunch. His hideous shriek bounced off the walls of the room and spread to the corridor outside. I, I mean even with that being turned down in editing that still hurt my ears. Ralsei shot upwards in a panic and began yelling as well, causing Birdly to scream even louder. Without thinking, Birdly raced out of the shared room in a flinch, with only his underwear to vouch for his modesty. As he ran out of the door, he ran into a familiar similarly hectic man of a pale complexion. The man grabbed Birdly by the shoulders to stop him from running. What is wrong? The man asked, his polite tone struggling to hold itself up amidst the chaos. I'm, I'm not, he, he I, I, I'm not. Birdly stammered incomprehensibly. He felt bile thump against his chest as it rose from his stomach. Birdly held a hand up to his mouth before turning tail on the other man and running towards the nearest exit. He finally felt a breeze of the outside world hide him as he pushed open an old, heavy door. 
The air smelled awful, but at least it felt better than the asphyxiating and claustrophobic air of the inside of the club. He threw himself against the closest physical object and leaned against it with one hand, finally letting all the puke and gunk rocket out of his beak, leaving a rotten smell in the air and yet more rotten feeling in his mouth. Birdly spent a few desperate seconds simply breathing erratically and acting to calm down. He took a moment to take in his surroundings. He was in a tight alleyway, pressed up against some overfilled dumpsters. The early morning sun peeked through the crack between the houses that led to the alleyway and cars barreled past the road he could just barely see. Birdly looked back down to the hard pool of his own making. His heart froze as he felt a foreign feeling. Oh god, the yeah, I just there's Chris. Judged. He looked up, and his eyes locked with the deep red pupils of that all too familiar human. Birdly squinted angrily and snarled. You. Chris said nothing, merely just stared down at him. This is all your fault. Birdly yelled at the human as he still kneeled down in his own puke. Chris's face still did not shift from that heavy judgmental stare. Ever since I first met you, it's all been your fault. Why do you haunt me so? What have I done to wrong you so much that you ruined my life in these horrid ways? Still, I, I mean, like, granted, I haven't read the rest of the story, and at this point I really don't want to, but, um, like, all of this just seems to be completely, like, this whole thing, it just, it seems so one-sided. This is all Birdly just projecting and hating. Chris said nothing. Birdly pried his eyes away from the human's haunting red eyes. His brain felt like a ship lost out at sea, steadily being gobbled up by the waves of rage and regrets. He thought back to his childhood, a time before even Susie, a time before he cared as much about his future and his work. A time when he was innocent and naive. A time when he and Chris were friends. He remembers clear as day how they used to hang out all the time when they were young, how they'd go over to each other's houses to play games, or how Chris would come up with elaborate pranks for the two to partake in despite Birdly's usual reluctance. Where did it all go wrong? Birdly remembers. They used to be close. Much too close for Birdly's father to bear, and after a stern conversation, Birdly was tasked with avoiding him. It would be a lie to say Birdly did not also miss those simple times of his youth, holding hands with his once best friend. Is that it? Birdly asked hoarsely. Is that why you torment me? Because I left you alone? And then once you thought you'd finally gotten back on your feet and got the new friend, I snatched her away as well. Is that why you loathe me? Is that why you haunt my darkest nightmares and most depraved dreams? Birdly looked up at the human once again, the embryos of tears forming in the corner of his eyes. The human's gaze didn't falter nor did his expression shift. Okay, is this Chris a hallucination? What is going on? Well, I hope you're happy. Because of you, I've been reduced to nothing. Less than nothing, in fact. Now nothing but a slob and a useless... Is that what you wanted? Did you just want to see me suffer after what I did to you? Maybe you were right. Maybe there is such a thing as karma. Birdly was quiet for a moment as he looked back down. You know, despite all that, I still... Birdly stops himself almost instinctively. He sighs, releasing the tension in his chest. Well, I can't believe I'm about to admit this. He mutters to himself before carrying on. I still... I still sometimes wish we were friends. Those moments we were together, they were... Birdly felt a stone weight pressed down on his chest as he attempted to spit out the final words. They were the happiest moments of my life. Birdly looked back up at the human standing above him. It was at this moment that Birdly finally noticed that the human was in fact a mannequin. No reaction. Birdly chuckled to himself as another realization hide him. What the hell, I have nothing else to lose. I want to put our past behind us. Everything is so different now. Do you think maybe we could be friends again? Birdly asked. Chris's really? scarlet eyes stared at him for a chilling moment before the human turned around, walking out of the tight alley, out into the city street. Birdly pushed himself up off the ground desperately. Wait. He called out, but to no avail. The human kept walking, onto the sidewalk yeah, that's a and lot onto to the ask road. Everything you did Birdly chased before. after Chris, stumbling and crashing through a metal trash can as he crawled out of the dank alleyway, the contrastingly bright sun almost blinding him. Why Chris. is it nighttime? He called out as he picked himself up off the pavement, recklessly following after the human on the other side of the cement road. Birdly, still in only his underpants, dove out onto the road desperate to reach out and to start anew after all he had already lost and thrown away. 
I'm sorry, he called out. That was the last thing the bird said before he was hit by a speeding automobile. Oh! What was that? Noel asked, referring to the strange bump in their otherwise smooth trip. Susie, who was somewhat shaken, and was now holding the steering wheel with the grip of a gorilla, shrugged. I don't know, probably an animal or something. Raccoon or something, I don't know. Like, how big are the raccoons you have? Oh, how terrible! Noel shrieked. It's alright, Noel. I know you're kind of icky about blood and stuff. You don't need to look. Susie reassured her. Noel sighed, still somewhat shaken. <sighs> Thank you, Susie. I must ask, though, where are we going exactly? Susie smirked. <laughs> We're going to Birdly's house and vandalizing it. That'll show him. The vandalizing? That seems reckless and illegal. Susie rolled her eyes. If you help me, we can make out. Noelle put on a robber's mask and began to dual wield the graffiti spray bottle and used her horns to hold rolls of toilet paper. Let's fuck that bird up. Bird up! Hello. Oh god, yeah, that reminds me of every bad fanfiction I have ever read. Oh. At this point, I don't really know, like, if this is even going to be usable. Like, I mean, I mean, if you're going to be, if anybody's actually watching this, then obviously the video's been put out. But at this point, I'm almost thinking of just deleting this and just, because this is going to be a horrible reaction. Of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Uh, corner video is in the uh, corner video will lead to my let's play of the day. And with all that out of the way, I, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if not. And I'll see you guys next time. <sighs> Goodbye. Father's note, please write your criticism in the comments. But if you're a hater, then don't write anything. It's my story. If you don't like, don't read. Constructive criticism only for love. Prologue, being the author. Their haters' point of view. Hello, and welcome to fanfiction.net. Everyone has a little something created inside them, and this is the place to let that something out. Whether it's adventure, romance, fantasy, horrible fetishes, lust, a slice of life, or a slice of lunch. To make sure you get the most out of fanfiction.net that you possibly can, we created this helpful guide to get you started in just four easy chapters. Chapter 1, The Basils of Writing. Let's start with the basics of writing. Where else would you